U.S. retail sales booked their sharpest rise in a year and a half, advancing by one full percent in July, more than was expected. And with summer waning, it is almost time for most students in the United States to return to school. And that means parents are going to be shelling out money for school supplies. Now, for some, it's a hard choice over buying all those that their kids need or paying bills. Anthony Chan, former chief economist at J.P. Morgan Chase, is with us to discuss that and, of course, the health of the U.S. economy. Anthony, great to see you again. Great to be here with you, Sean. Okay, so we started out our program looking at the retail sales numbers. Certainly, it shines a more positive light on the nation's economy. I'm curious your takeaway. I think that it really allays a lot of the fears because we know that after the market uh, setback that we got about a week ago, there was real uh, concerns out there that we might be heading into a, a serious or or an imminent uh, situation where we would have a recession. And, and clearly, this uh, retail sales report certainly allayed those concerns. But it wasn't just this retail sales number. The Walmart earnings report mm. uh, was also very encouraging. Okay, let's talk about, now back to school, apparel, clothing, among the sectors that sort of dragged down the retail sales numbers just a bit. So what do we expect as the legions of kids head off back to school? Will parents be sinking more money into dressing their kids in the latest fashions, latest sneakers, or are families having to make tough choices right now? Where should we spend our money? I think that uh, families are have been making uh, some tough choices. I, I recently wrote an article on Substack dot com uh, where I basically point out that there are two different uh, groups of consumers now those that are more wealthy and those that are less wealthy and the ones that are less wealthy are struggling so we basically are experiencing a k-shaped recovery which is the title of my substack.com mm -hmm. article uh, so that's something that we have to contend with with regard to recession given the fact that there are enough consumers out there that are spending enough to give you a very strong retail sales report relative to expectations, we can stop worrying about a recession over the near term, but we can't stop worrying about the fact that there are some consumers that are struggling, uh, and that's one of the reasons why you see uh, consumers uh, having to choose between spending money on back-to-school uh, supplies or even apparel or actually going to the supermarket. And in fact, the retail sales report did tell us that consumers are being a little bit more careful about how they spend their money, spending more money on the staples and, and basically uh, not ex too excited about discretionary goods. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right on those two different groups. In fact, when I was researching the questions for you, I kind of came across that just reading that. So to expand on that, inflation chiefly hits the big ticket items, house payments, cars, but it definitely affects credit card debt as well. So how are rising costs influencing consumer choices and retailer responses now that people are going back to school and parents have to shell out a lot of money? Well, Sean, what you're seeing with retailers and even restaurants uh, is that they realize that there are a lot of consumers that are stressed, and hence you're seeing even from the... Uh, uh, restaurants, fast food establishments, they're, they're, they're basically putting together deals uh, for mm -hmm. consumers to basically attract them to come in and hope that they will spend money uh, because the consumer today in this environment is focused on getting good value for their expenditures. And so if you offer them a, a good purchase or a good buy, then they, they get attracted. And that's what uh, many retailers are doing. And they will continue to do promotional Right. Uh, goals on the part of retailers is, is certainly going to be the way to go. Okay, now the National Retail Federation says that parents are going to spend somewhere between 32 and $39 billion getting children ready to return to school. To me, that seems like a pretty broad range. I mean, we're talking $7 billion. All things considered, uh, I want to go back to what retailers are doing to adjust, especially if, if what you say is right, and I certainly think it is, that there are really two different consumers reacting to the way the economy is. Those more well-off are doing okay. Those who are struggling are struggling even more. They are. And by the way, Sean, uh, you could see that clearly in the credit card uh, debt numbers where you're seeing delinquencies picking up. Mm -hmm. But believe it or not, credit card uh, debt is still a very small percentage of, of household debt. The, the real big... Uh, 800-pound gorilla in the room is uh, mortgage debt, and there 
delinquency rates are at very low levels. So by and large, when you look at all household debt, uh, it's relatively low, certainly much, much lower than anything we've seen in prior crises like the global financial crisis. We're also seeing some consumer delinquency, uh, delinquency uh, rates going up also on autos. But again, these are small components of total overall household debt. And with interest rates starting to come down, many of these consumers will be able to tap on their home equity. So they may get a little bit of a lifesaver from that uh, source. Well, let's talk a bit more about that. Do you think that, 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 that people have learned from these past crises? Or do you think that it's is just there's been so much preaching about possible doom and gloom that they are kind of withholding? I think that there, anytime you have a presidential election, you've got this polarization and the opposing party, it doesn't matter which one it is, will try to paint the picture that the economy is doing much worse. Remember, Sean, mm. potential growth is about 1.8%. And now, even for the third quarter, I'm looking for growth to be somewhere close to 2.5%. It's clearly above the potential. The unemployment rate, everybody says, oh, it's very high. It's gone up from 3.4 to 4.3. But research that I recently did in another article finds that the average uh, unemployment rate right before we go into a recession is 4.9%. So even there, we're doing a lot better. But yet, uh, it, it's not painted that way. It's painted as though gloom and doom is, is right before us. Reality, it is not. Another story, real short, real quickly, is that everybody says, oh, the consumer is, is falling behind because of inflation. But the reality is, if you look at the pre-pandemic, right before the pandemic, mm. and you look at average real wages after adjusting for inflation, they're positive. In other words, yes, inflation has gone up uh, quite a bit, a little over 19 percent, but wages have gone up over 23 percent. So even there, the consumer is a little bit better off in terms of uh, inflation. But it's just by a small amount, and we still have this growing inequality that's still separating us into two dichotomous groups, those consumers yeah. that are struggling and those that are better off. Okay, anybody waiting for a break in the rhetoric, <laughs> strap in. We're in political season. It's not going to happen. Anthony Chan, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. My pleasure.